Hi, I'm Bill the Tutor. I tutor math, chemistry, and statistics at Eastern Florida State College, and I tutor students with disabilities. Today I'm going to show you how to teach a blind student uh, how to build a 3D probability curve, a normal distribution. It's uh, pretty easy to do, and it costs less than 10 bucks. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you what to do, and I'm going to give you the first lesson so that it goes along with it. And if you're helping a student with disabilities, this hopefully will help you to help him or her, either one. So what we have here now is a plain old piece of fo file folder. It's just stiff, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to lay it down on the table, and I have these little blocks. You know, they're just like these kids' blocks that you buy, you know, in a children's store. And I, bu I bought two packages of blocks, and here, here's what it looks like. It's, uh, I bought them at Hobby Lobby, and they were like four bucks a pack, and I bought two packs, and that's more than enough. And uh, you don't have to use these. You can use those little children's blocks. You know the ones with the letters on it? The babies are one year old and they, they learn the alphabet? It works fine. In fact, that's what I used with my, uh, my blind student. I have those. But I'm going to make use these for the video. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay these down and I'm going to make a histogram. Okay, and I'm putting four blocks. This is uh, really easy to do. And then I'm going to put um, three blocks. And then I'm going to put two blocks. And then I'm going to put one block, and here we go. Then I'm going to clean it up. I'm sort of centering it on this uh, piece of paper here. All right, and this is pretty easy to do. Uh, let's get this guy over here, and this guy over here. We're lining these up just right, okay. And here we go. What this is is a histogram of the normal distribution. And this is like lesson number one in, in, uh, in beginner's uh, statistics, uh, beginner statistics course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the bell curve with a magic marker. And it's asymptotic to the curve on the left, and it comes up and it goes over to the, whoops, goes over the top like this, and it comes back down and it goes back out, and it's asymptotic to the right. Now I'm done with that aspect of it. I'm going to slide these guys aside, okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of scissors. Now, you know, this is kind of interesting, and I'm going to just cut this out. It doesn't have to be real fancy. Um, Not a real good scissors guy here, but we'll get it. There's no one here. Let's get this out of the way. And that goes off asymptotically that way. Now we're done with that. I'm going to set that aside. And if you look at my screen here, this actually looks pretty close to being what we have on the screen for a normal distribution. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build these blocks in a vertical manner. I'm, I'm setting them like this. I'm going to put I'm going to put four high. And now this is what a blind student will do. Now I'll do this the first time for the blind student, and then I'll get him to feel it. And I'm going to point out the important areas and regions. And what's going to happen then is he's going to feel all this stuff. He's going to memorize it. It'll be in his visual cortex, and he'll be good to go. All right. So now I've got this just like this. And now I'm going to lay this up here just like that, and I'm going to, you know, here's what the blind person will do. He'll hold onto these blocks gently like that, and he'll run his finger over this curve, and he'll feel it. And he can run it this way and that way, and, and you tell him that this, this is going off asymptotically uh, to the right and to the left, all right? And so he gets a visual, he gets a visual uh, in his mind about what this thing looks like. Now what else he can feel is he can feel these lines between these blocks, and after he's built them, he knows they're there. And the line in the center is X bar. It's our mean. It's our average of all of our data, all of our observations. Okay? And each vertical line, okay, like from here is zero, this vertical line is one standard deviation away from the mean. And this vertical line here is two standard deviations away from the mean. And this is three, and this is four, and it goes on and on and on. So now, well, what I ask him to do is to, I tell him, first of all, that the area under this whole curve, when the mean is zero, is one. All the numbers to the right of the mean are positive. All the numbers to the left of the mean are negative. So what we have here is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and on and on. Now, what he has to memorize is just the, the first, second, and third standard deviations about the mean, okay? So if uh, right now the area under the curve from 0 to 1 is approximately 34%. Now I'm using 
approximations for percents here because this is a, a we just need to get the basics down and uh, and you know get get everything started so if it's 34 percent here it's going to be 34 percent here all right that gives us a total of 68 percent for the area under the curve from here to here that's minus one zero and plus one so between minus one and plus one standard deviations the area under this curve which is by the way the probability is 68%. Now the area from minus 2, which is minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2, the area between this, this, li this line and this line is 95%. It's actually 95.4, but for memorization purposes in this case, 95 will work just fine. All right. And now the last one and the most important one is um, the, the area under the curve from minus 3 to plus 3. All right. Uh, this one here is 99.7 okay so 99.7 percent of one is the area under a curve that has a mean of zero all right and it's normally distributed all right and that's what it is so now 99.7 the balance which is in the tail okay we have actually two tails all right is going to be 0.3 so the balance in this particular it's actually, uh, yeah, 0.3. So actually 0.3%, it's 0.003. And, uh, and, and so the, ba the balance under one tail is going to be 0.015, and this is going to be 0.015. It's a little more difficult, to, but, but you know what? He'll get through it. I spent two hours with my blind student. We had some fun, and uh, uh, we were, well, I also helped him with his talking calculator. Um, and, and, and I'll talk about that in just a second, too. So now we have a, a, a visual concept of a three-dimensional visual concept of a, of a normal distribution. And what I did was I plugged in some real data. So I said, look, at, let's, let's play with your calculator. So we played with this calculator. And it's kinda, this calculator is very interesting because when you press a, a function, it tells you what the function is. And when you press equal, it says, well, that equals that. And so what I wanted to do is give him uh, his, he has a, a standard deviation button on his calculator. And we had a way to enter data. So what I did was I took some real simple data, and I said, look, at let's, let's say our observations are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we entered all those numbers in. We have a, a sum of all of those observations is 15. We have an n of 5. And so our average is 3. Of course, we can intuitively tell the average of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is 3. So that would mean, then, that our x bar is 3. All right, so we would have a vertical line that would say our mean or our x bar is three. Now, one standard deviation and the other standard deviation is something we need to calculate. Now, in a, in a few more weeks, he'll be doing it uh, with algebra. Okay, but for now, we need to get the basics down. And so what I did was I had I taught him how to enter in for data one, two, three, four, five, and then uh, have the calculator retrieve the standard deviation. And when he did that. It said standard deviation and it's equals and it was 1.58, and and you know it was a big irrational number, but for our purposes, for this discussion only, I'm going to call it 1.5. All right, so we're going to say that the standard deviation for uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 1.5, and that means that it the the correct term is standard deviation about the mean. So if the standard deviation is 1.5, that means that 3 plus 1.5 which is 4.5, that would be this line, and 3 minus 1.5, that would be 1.5, that would be this line. So the area under the curve from minus, or from 1.5 to 4.5 is 68%. It starts to really make sense when you have these things, and you know, you can tell when somebody's getting it, and he was getting it. So let's take a look at the data. So I'm going to move this aside, all right, and I'm going to say, um, in life, um, when we do statistics, what happens is our data doesn't always give us zeros for means. It always gives us something else. In fact, in this case, our mean is 3. So our data is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's our data for this uh, simple lecture, okay? And so our mean is 3. And there's a, there's a thing called a z-chart, and all statistics um, refers to z-charts, which is nothing more then z values are standard deviation values when the mean is zero. And so when we have a mean of three, we want to calculate its z number. So the, the, the formula for that is z equals x minus x bar all divided by s. All right? 
Now in our data here, one, two, three, four, five, we have uh, uh, n equals five, five observations. We had an s of 1.5, so we could say our s value is 1.5. Our x bar is three, that's the three that goes here. From our calculator, we said, well, all right, well, one standard deviation of, of away from three is 4.5, that would have fell right about here, and then this one would have been 1.5, would have fell about here. So if I put a 1.5 here, 1.5 minus 3, that's 1.5 over 1.5, what you're going to wind up with is um, a, a z value of 1. So we just went full circle. We went from the, the, the graph being uh, the real thing, the real data, to a graph where the, uh, the mean is 0. And then if we put in 4.5 minus 3, actually, the, the, the one, this, this would be minus 1. 1.5 minus 3 uh, is, is minus 1.5 over 1.5, so that's minus 1. And then if we put the 4.5 minus 3, that's going to be plus 1. So it was very simple to do. And uh, I know it's hard for um, uh, especially blind people to get uh, visual aids. You know, you have to make them or buy them, and they're expensive. This is a $10 solution. And, it, and, and anybody that tutors a blind student um, will know that, you know, you're either loaded with money and you have all kinds of stuff or you get clever. And this was my way of getting clever. So... Um, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and, uh, and have some fun with your student and his talking calculator if he's got one. I hope he does. And uh, thank you for watching this video.